Kel Kellogg here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber and you like this content, please take a second to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll always know when I'm here on the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions channel talking about trout fishing strategy, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. I'm guiding, I'm out on the water a lot, I'm making a lot of observations, and I'm going to pass those observations on to you guys in hopes of making you more consistent anglers. If you're more consistent, you're going to catch more and bigger trout throughout the year and throughout your fishing career. So let's get into it. Let's talk about trout and weather. Weather is very important, you know. Trout are, are a cold water species, so we find ourselves out targeting them a lot during the fall, during the winter, during the early spring, when the weather can be really variable. And uh, I've been doing very well out at Collins Lake, but I've been having to deal with, with major variations in weather. As you can probably see now behind me, we've got a storm coming into Northern California, which is fantastic. We need all the rain we can get. Um, we've already had a couple storms move through. So I've been dealing with prefrontal conditions, postfrontal conditions, and it can make the fishing difficult, but not impossible. You shouldn't stay home because of weather unless the weather is unsafe. So let's talk about, and I'm going to just kind of drop some footage over me talking here of, of what we've been doing out on the boat. Prefront. Pre this week I had one day, I had pre-front fishing, and we found that the fish were pretty aggressive. I couldn't go up and run like a, a full spread of spoons. They weren't aggressive enough to be really chasing, but I did start out the day with some spoons, then I transitioned to the plastics, but we were getting very good hookups. We were having no trouble getting hit. We probably hooked 25 or 30 fish on the day. We landed some, we lost some, and uh, we had a great day all the way around. It was a lot of fun. As a front moves in, as a front approaches, typically the fishing is very good because on an instinctive level, the fish know that they might not be able to feed for an extended period of time in the wake of the storm, depending on how violent the storm is, depending on how much the storm changes, the water conditions, the temperature, the clarity, so on, stuff like that. So typically, a front that's arriving means good fishing and fairly active fish, okay? A, a front that is retreating, typically that means it's gonna be a north wind day here in, in Northern California. It's gonna be a north wind day. Um, the barometer is, is going to be rising and uh, the fish are just gonna be lethargic and they're gonna be off the bite. I, I faced those conditions um, yesterday and that's exactly what we found and to some extent the day before. We had a north wind, it was very cold, um, the fish were lethargic, they weren't willing to go on a spoon, they weren't willing to go on flies. It was 100% small profile soft plastics. That's what the bite was. We had a grind on the fish, um, but we got our bites. Um, we landed, I think we landed 13 of 15 hookups yesterday very good average score. Trolling speed yesterday was 1.8. When you're facing those post front conditions and that north wind, it's time to slow down. It's time to downsize. Use that Procure. We were using the Procure sweet corn yesterday. We had a great day, but if I'd have went out there with the mindset that I'm gonna power troll, I'm gonna force feed these fish, I'm gonna pull speedy shiners or speed spoons or rapalas or whatever, we'd have been in for a long day. I'm sure we would have caught you know a few fish, but we wouldn't have put 13 in the box. That's for dang sure. So post front, the bite's off, patience, slower, smaller, use the scent, use something that's got a small profile and erratic action, something that stays in the strike zone for an extended period of time. I was using Trout Tricks worms primarily yesterday. I mixed in some of my trigger minnows and stuff like that. They're very successful. Very erratic presentation, very slim in profile, and you know, moving 1.8, sometimes down to 1.5 if I was going into the wind, something that just stays in the strike zone for an extended period of time and gives the fish a target to really, really key in on and really kind of tease them with. Um, we had several bites that started out, you know, one tap, two taps, and then the, the rod would go down and it'd be fish on. So, to sum up, remember, an approaching front often provides very good fishing because the fish are active and they're looking to feed. Post front, they tend to get lockjaw a little bit. You gotta be patient. 
you got to work them, downsize, slow down, employ the sense, and uh, you'll often find yourself out there pulling a good day out of very challenging conditions. Talked to other guys on the lake yesterday. They were using standard tactics. One guy had one bite. One guy had one fish. Another guy had one or two fish. It was very challenging. We had 13 fish and a really good time. So that's all I got to say. If you're looking for trout gear, including my trout tricks, worms, all that and more rods and reels and whatnot, or if you want to book a trip with me and you want to learn out on the water while we're catching fish, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. Check out our store. Check out our guiding calendar. There's a lot of information up there on rigging, all that kind of stuff and more. Anyway, I'm Cal Kellogg. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for listening to me jabber here on the channel. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those beautiful fish we caught this week. And I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube.